we continue our uh, study of um, Zephaniah chapter 3 of the end time prophecies regarding Israel and the rest of the world. Um, we have seen the last time um, where we are now uh, as described in Zephaniah uh, 3 verses 1 through, um, through 8 or through 7. Uh, we've seen what uh, is soon to follow the beginning uh, of the tribulation period um, preceded by the rapture of the church and um, we had just made a beginning of this transition from the tribulation into the millennial reign where we also saw that um, God will undo Babel and bring the people back to one language once more. And so we have come to Zephaniah 3 verse 10. And there it reads, From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. During the millennial reign, people will come from afar to worship the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings, who will rule from Jerusalem. It speaks here about the daughter of my dispersed. These are the descendants of Israel. My dispersed was, is of course Israel. Uh, Zechariah also speaks of uh, this event here um, in uh, chapter 14, verse uh, 16. He writes, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem even go up from year to year, to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feasts of tabernacles. And so, during the tribulation, that is, uh, at least uh, that feast is uh, continue, uh, continuing. Uh, it continues then in verse 11, Zephaniah 3, In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. God is speaking here to Israel. That's the Tao he is addressing. And he describes what will disappear. What will disappear is shame. Shame over their transgressions. Shame uh, over their um, not uh, recognizing the Messiah the first time. What will disappear is the prideful, but also pride itself and arrogance. So we see that both those who were prideful and hostile against Israel will be gone. They will be dealt with during the tribulation period. And the pride and arrogance and shame within Israel will also be gone. Israel will be purified. Remnant, we use this word a lot, but it means left over. It's a residue. It's not all. It's actually a small bit, a small part that um, remains. Zephaniah continues then in verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So here we get a description of the remnant of Israel, and compare this with verses 1 through 4 that we read last time about um, Israel, you see it's a whole different thing. Um, there, uh, Israel was called filthy, polluted, unholy. That has been purified and the remnant is, uh, is like gold or silver refined in fire. It's pruned and that will be a rigorous and painful process. And we can see the beginning of it already. And um, it is painful, it's obvious. Ezekiel describes it in the following way. We go to Ezekiel chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thine beard. And then take th uh, the balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city, 
And when the days of the siege are fulfilled, thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And the third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number, few in number, and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God. This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. The hair of Ezekiel's head and face represents Israel. It's divided in three parts and seems to be destroyed completely. If you read verse 2, you think there's nothing left. However, verse 3 says that there is a few in number saved. It's just a few of the one-third. Verse 4 then says that even that small part, part goes through the refiner's fire. It is and will be so bad that nothing seems to be left of Israel. Even the prophet Ezekiel, as he records all this, he, he's, he thinks this, this is the end of Israel. And he says at some point to God in um, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 8, And it came to pass while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? He's desperate. He thinks everything's gone. But no, there will be a small remnant, a residue. And God says about them in Ezekiel 14, verse 22, Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and they shall see their way and their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem even concerning all that I have brought upon it. It's a painful process. And that remnant that will be left, that small part of the one-third that also has to go through the refiner's fire, whatever is left of that, that is the all Israel that Paul speaks about in Romans 11. There is no reason for Israel, and by the way also not for the church, for which this is also a template, no need to sit back comfortably and assume to be saved. There's no reason to do that, because uh, things are not so uh, not to be taken for granted. But those that stand the refiner's fire are like the sheep in Psalm 23. They lay down without fear and they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We go back to Zephaniah chapter 3. The rest of this chapter speaks about that time. That time which is the millennial reign of earth. Now it's no longer the polluted filthy Israel that it speaks about in verse 1. Uh, it's not even the Israel that goes into tribulation. Uh, but it's what's left, the remnant that's left that is pure. Um, and so we must in all this not forget that God chose Israel, Jerusalem in particular, uh, from where to rule. He tells the daughter of Zion, which is the final remnant, to rejoice therefore. In um, verse 14, Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The daughter of Zion is that remnant Israel. Micah uses the same terminology and gives us also the context of the when. And for that we go to Micah uh, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of God, of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of all his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord 
from Jerusalem. So that corroborates with what we just read before in Zephaniah 3 verse 10 and also in Zechariah 14 verse 16. But uh, we see that this um, is in the very last days when the Lord rules from Zion, from Jerusalem. Michael continues then to talk about his remnant in verse 7. And I will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth, even forever. Then follows a profound prophecy in Micah 4 verse 8. O thou tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. You see consistently here this, this uh, terminology, daughter of Zion or daughter of Jerusalem. This is the remnant after all this process has happened. But he speaks here of the tower of the flock. A flock tower, Migdal Eder, uh, is what he speaks about. And we learn from um, the next chapter, in Micah 5, verse chapter 2, Micah 5, verse 2, that uh, this is in Bethlehem. And we understand that a ruler will be born there. This actually refers to the place where Rachel gave birth to Benjamin. And we read the same thing, it was in the fields of Bethlehem uh, in a flock tower. Uh, Rachel gave birth to Benjamin, Benjamin meaning the son of the right hand, and it was really um, a type there, a uh, foreshadow of um, the son of God who sits at the right hand of the throne. Uh, he was, uh, so Benjamin was born there in Bethlehem in this flock tower. Um, and that, uh, that, that labor went with much uh, pain. Uh, Rachel had to suffer and actually did not survive that. This is the exact same place where Jesus was born into this world. The stable that we usually speak of was actually a flock tower, Migdal Eder, uh, in there in the fields of uh, Bethlehem. He was born there into this world for his first dominion, as Micah writes here. But Israel rejected him. They are left without a king. Like Rachel, they died of sorts. Um, and I've many times I've used this typology that Leah, uh, the, fir the first daughter of Laban, was, uh, is a type of the church. And Rachel um, is a type of the remnant of Israel. And so you see that uh, though um, Jacob is in love with Rachel and he wants her, he gets instead uh, Leah. And then he has to labor uh, another seven years for Rachel. And that's exactly what we see that uh, Jesus came for his people, um, but they rejected him. And so... Uh, focus went to the Gentiles, to the church. Uh, and after another seven years of labor, that's the tribulation period, Rachel will be added. There's the remnant of Israel. So the typology is perfect and it all matches perfectly. Uh, and um, yeah, the, the mystery here uh, is that it is this very same spot where Rachel gave birth to Benjamin is where Mary gave birth to Jesus. Micah 4 verse 9 speaks then about this rejection. Now why dost thou cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor per perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. And we can see it even today that Israel is crying for a king, for a redeemer, the Messiah, like a woman in travail. And it will come, but they will have to go through the tribulation and they will see the beast system in Revelation also referred to as Babylon before the deliverance comes. And that is what Micah also speaks about. Be in pain. This is now talking about the tribulation period. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. 
For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Of course, you can think of the Babylonian captivity, but this goes further, and the context shows also this has to do with the Messiah. Um, and we see actually the exact same picture in Revelation 12, where there is a woman in travail, and then the Messiah is born, and redemption is brought to the woman, even to the remnant of the woman, the daughter of Zion. And Jesus speaks also about this when he says that um, um, when these things, when you see these things happen, flee, uh, flee to the mountains. Uh, it is, uh, Micah says here, thou shalt dwell in the field. Um, and um, Micah also speaks of the events preceding that in verse 11. Uh, now also many nations have gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled, let uh, our eye look upon Zion. So again, this is how it all begins. And this is where we are exactly now in 2024. All the nations are against Zion. <clears throat> and it will get worse, of course, uh, and find its um, culmination in uh, the Battle of Armageddon. Micah 5 verse 2 then um, prophesies of the Messiah being born in Bethlehem. Uh, there it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of them shall he come forth unto, unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. The Messiah is born in Bethlehem. Um, and he will become a ruler in Israel, says here. Well, that has not happened. He was born in Bethlehem, but he has not become a ruler in Israel. That is not until the millennial reign. Um, and so verse 3, the next verse, tells us that Israel would indeed reject him and uh, not accept him until during the tribulation period. That's a travail it speaks about here. Uh, Micah 5 verse 3. Therefore he will give them up until the time that she which travaileth had brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Not until that time. So we go back to Zephaniah. It is time to rejoice. Finally, during the millennial, the daughter of Zion will be glad and sing. Uh, Zephaniah writes, verse 15 through 17, The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. There is joy, finally. But we see that there is a long way to go um, before we get there. Well, not in, in years, actually, because we are on the brink of um, the tribulation period. And uh, after the seven years, of course, all this will, uh, will start, the millennial reign. But uh, there is a lot of suffering to go through. What we see today is uh, the beginning of sorrow, the birth banks. What will follow is the home calling of God's people, the bride, Leah. She will be safe in her room as Jacob suffers trouble for Rachel, the remnant. And it will go along with the judgment of the nations. And it will end in the glorious return of Jesus with all his saints. And then... There's the day of rest, the millennial reign, the sabbatical millennial. We're witnessing Israel going through a painful process of refining. And this is just the beginning of it. While at the same time the world is being set up for judgment. And it will get worse. But eventually the daughter of Zion will rejoice. And so that are the last verses of Zephaniah 3, speaking about this um, 
this millennial reign, this period of rest and joy. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and f uh, fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth, when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Amen. <laughs>